TNT Sports welcomes you live to New England for butt pole qualifying to set the starting field for Sunday's Sylvania 300. The New Hampshire International Speedway began hosting NASCAR Winston Cup races in 1993, and every one of them has been sold out. The question today, which 43 drivers of the 47 here will be in the field when the green flag waves Sunday before another sellout crowd? And which one of those 43 will be on pole position? Down to pit road, here's Marty Snyder. Alan, I'll give you a guess who is fastest in practice this morning. This man, Ryan Newman. Could you possibly get the seventh pole of the year for this team, Ryan? Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, uh, we're just going to go out and get the best lap we can. Uh, the car's really good. Got mobile one back on the car. Uh, and just uh, do what we can do uh, to, to bust off a good lap. A lot of good cars here. Um, you know, typically a, a tough racetrack to, to qualify at because you know, it's a relatively flat and uh, you got to have the car out on the edge a little bit. Actually does not have the car that finished top five here in July. He has the car that won this race last year. Matt Yoakum. But Marty Ryan Newman has a late draw. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the second fastest guy in practice. You go out third. How much of a hindrance would that be for you getting your first pole this year? I don't know. Um, we got a good car, but, you know, the early draw might not be the thing. But uh, I don't know if it's going to change too much weather-wise, so it should be just about the same for Ryan. You've got four different divisions racing here. How much does that hurt the track as far as all that different rubber? Uh, I think it's a little more grip. You know, um, it's no fun to go out right after the modifieds or because they run a little different rubber. But uh, the truck's been running a lot today. And uh, I just think, you know, rubber on top of rubber just gives the track a lot more grip. And uh, normally it takes these cars a little bit of uh, time to get up to speed, a couple laps. And uh, we were right out there on the track today and going real fast. So, hey, you know, it ain't a big deal. It ain't like it used to be. It used to be a real big problem. And uh, But here lately, it doesn't seem to be a big effect. Rolls off third. His best start here at New Hampshire is third. Today, Burns. Well, Matt, I'm going to hang around in the garage area today and look at what some of the hard-working people down here are doing. I'm in the inspection line right now where the teams are still lined up, those with a late draw, to go and get their cars through technical inspection. But, you know, before they got here, the teams did hours and hours worth of work to make sure the car was ready to go. In fact, I've got Terry Labonte's checklist here with all the things on it that they check before the car ever goes on the track. Interestingly, the date on here is Sunday. And the reason for that is that all of this has already been done at the shop. All these things that are on here, checking the coil wires, checking the starter wires, the power steering fluid level. I mean, everything you could possibly do to make sure this car is ready has been done at the shop before they ever take it on the transporter and bring it here. So what happens between down Sunday? Well, they get out and practice. They qualify. They have two more practice sessions. And then Sunday morning, they go through this whole list again. And guys, uh, any idea how many items are on here total? I don't. I just worry about my area, and everybody else worries about their own. Yeah, it's exactly right. They wouldn't want to have to know everything because there are 131 items on this checklist. That's how much work these guys will do before Sunday morning and when they push them out to the line getting ready for the race. Alan? I want to make sure nobody has a screw loose down there like Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave. <laughs> Alan Bestwick, Benny Parsons here, set to bring you Bud Pole qualifying at New Hampshire. BP, this racetrack, the changes made to it a year ago, make the outside lane faster than the bottom lane. Does that make it tough on these drivers to get a good qualifying it lap? It does, Alan. I was watching some of these guys this morning going in the racetrack, and... You know, you'd think here'd be the groove down next to the yellow line. Not so. Somewhere in here is the groove, and trying to hit the perfect spot going in the corner is difficult, and we'll see some guys today missing that perfect spot. Four drivers under the track record in practice. We'll see if the speed mark goes down today. Sadly, the major story of discussion in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage today is not a very uh, promising story. It's a very sad story. We've all followed together the story of Tara and Sean Parker, Dale Jarrett's crew chief and his wife, over the last couple of years through her quest for a heart transplant and a successful one and a new baby coming into their life just over a month ago. Sadly, Tara was killed on Wednesday night in a car accident outside of Greensboro, North Carolina, along with two others. She was 29 years old. Everyone here at the racetrack thinking about Sean today. His team is here trying to carry on their work, though their hearts are elsewhere. And Marty Snyder is with Sean Parker's team owner now. It's been a difficult week for Robert Yates and the entire Robert Yates racing organization. Robert, just uh, take us through the week, and, and, and we kind of know, but how is Sean doing right now? Well, Sean's doing really what he has to do. You know, he just, he needs all the support he's got. You know, this big racing community, there are a lot of people with him, even today. Um, he'll need them today, tomorrow, and for years to come. It's very tragic. It's, uh, 
you know, devastates a life for a long time. And, and so many lives, the father who lost three daughters, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, maybe his friends will support him and, but it's, you know, just devastated a lot of lives that it's not just this week, but this is something that will be, you know, tragic for years to come. And, you know, for Sean, you know, he wants his team, young crew chief here, he wants us to come up here and do good. And, uh, we'll try to do that, but he'll, he'll need the, the, and I want to thank all the support and uh, everybody that's called and everybody wants to do something for him, but two babies without moms, uh, it's tough. You I, can just imagine being there, you know, it's tough. I talked to Robert earlier and he said, this is our job. We have to race this weekend. We do not want to be here, but we must focus on the task at hand, Alan. Certainly all of our uh, thoughts and prayers are with Sean Parker and uh, his family in their time of need. Terrible, terrible story. And you can tell by Robert Yates, just listen to him, what a decent man that he really is. All right, back to the business, as Robert said. The racing goes on, and here's Bobby Labonte on track for his Bud Pole qualifying laps. Two laps the format today, top 36 on time, make the cut for Sunday first. And Bobby was 37th in the practice session, and that lap that he ran on the first lap was slower than his practice, and the second lap even even slower than that, so he slowed down two tenths from practice. Good bet for provisional land there. We'll see. Bud Pole qualifying just underway from New Hampshire International Speedway. We're coming back. NASCAR Bud Pole qualifying on TNT is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. And new Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. And Dave Blaney is the second car on track at New Hampshire International Speedway in today's Bud Pole qualifying. And Blaney was 19th best. He was barely under the 29 second bracket, 28.97. Can Blaney duplicate? Right now, our TNT pace chase says he can. Green, green, going in turn three. That says his lap is faster than Bobby Labonte's was. And so far, so good. A chunk faster. Look at that. So Blaney, 29-18. That's still, again, two-tenths slower than he practiced this morning. Now, Benny, is this one of those racetracks that as it sits in the sun between the end of practice and the beginning of qualifying? I know they, they had Craftsman Truck Series qualifying between the end of Winston Cup practice and now, but it also, there was a period of time where the track just sat dormant. Does this track slow down as it sits dormant? Most of them do. As the, as the track sits there and, and nothing happens on the racetrack, they do slow down. The cars lose grip. They go in the corner, they slide across the racetrack. And Blaney's second lap was even slower, was slower than his first. So Dave Blaney and Bobby Labonte, the two drivers that have qualified. And I tell you what, let's ask Bobby Labonte about the racetrack. Was it different? Why don't we ask him, BP? Uh, was the track different? BP's dying to know. Well, it was for me, but it hadn't been the same all day. Uh, we just haven't been able. This car hasn't been able to take a set all day for whatever reason. And uh, uh, it got pretty loose getting into three. Uh, I don't have too much rear brake. Got too much front brake. But the rear brakes were kind of like too heavy. And uh, I thought I could have backed her in there. And uh, I didn't think I was going to hurt myself. Maybe that would have been the thing to do. BP, I don't know if that answered your question or not, but we tried, Matt. And we, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Matt. And Elliot Sadler buckling in, getting the Hans device ready. Now, Elliot, 12 fastest in practice. How much can you guys pick up to get into that top five? Well, I kind of hope we just bag it up, Matt. The track's a little hotter. And us going out early is going to hurt us a little bit. But... Uh, We'll try to get this M&M's Ford Taurus as close to the front as we can. Uh, we're kind of racing with heavy hearts today and just uh, got that in the back of our minds. So we want to send all our regards to Parker, Sean, and his family, and also Terry and theirs. And he was your car chief. Yeah, he was my car chief, and we had a special relationship. And uh, I love his attitude towards racing. I've learned so much from him. So uh, uh, it's given us a lot of inspiration today, me and DJ both. So hopefully we'll get him to do a good job for him. They've been in everybody's thoughts and prayers today, Benny. Oh, check this out. Look at this. Four tenths faster than the pole. Junior ran at 28.75, 73 in practice. 28.88. 28.88. So he slowed down 15 one hundred, but much faster than the other two cars that have made their qualifying runs. Track record, if you're curious, is 28.802 seconds. Ryan Newman said that in qualifying here for this race one year ago. No qualifying for the July 
race here because of the weather. Our TNT Pace Chase. Pace Chase says that Junior is not going to be as good on this second lap. We knew what you were trying to say. All right. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit slower. As a matter of fact, almost uh, a tenth of a second slower. So Dale Jr., who was second fastest in practice, posts an early number for everybody else to shoot at. From the network that knows drama. A little trick I learned in the car seat for term at home. Could you hold this? Nicholas Cage, Angelina Jolie. Tonight at 8 on TNT. What did you see Nemechek drive that thing down in turn one? Slam on those brakes hard. It's butthole qualifying for New Hampshire on TNT. Joe Nemechek was the eighth fastest driver in practice. He's now taking a shot at Dale Jr.'s time. And not, you can see not, from our, good, yeah. not too good from our TNT pace chase. That turn one, and this car seems to be really sliding across the way. Bobby Labonte talked about his car, and Nemechek just cannot find any grip at all. Joe Nemechek with his first career NASCAR Winston Cup win this race, 1999. Remember the day well. Very jubilant celebration. His day is not going as well as expected right now, though. I mean, Nemechek was eighth best. He ran 28.87. If he could have duplicated his lap in practice, he would have beaten Dale Earnhardt Jr. But as you see, our pace chase cannot do it. Just no grip out there right now. Very warm day here in uh, northern New England for mid-September. That showing up in some of the track conditions as they change throughout the afternoon. How about the guy that's on the pole right now, Marty? Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was wondering if that draw was going to hurt. Upon further review, was it a, a, a disadvantage to have the early draw? Well, I mean, it's not an advantage. I don't know if it's a disadvantage. I definitely, yeah, everybody would love to go as late as they possibly could just, just because all them cars are out there running around and getting some heat in the track and stuff. But I don't know if it hurt me too bad. I, I might have. We might have went up on the air pressure just a little bit too much or something like that. The car was a little ch chattery uh, the first lap, and that's the lap that we had to get up and go. And, but it's better. We're way better than we've ever been here in qualifying, so uh, pretty happy. Hopefully get a good starting spot. But I did say from practice to qualifying, he did notice a change in the racetrack. Matt? Tony Stewart's last pull came at Chicago. And, Tony, in terms of qualifying, how difficult is it to qualify here at New Hampshire? One of the more difficult tracks? Only if you're Tony Stewart today and you're as slow as we are, but uh, yeah, it's one of these tracks that you got to be on your marks. You can't miss. So. And it's probably a little less forgiving than some of the other tracks we go to, but uh, you know, Zippy and, and everybody on the Home Depot team have worked really hard to get the Monte Carlo driving. We just we, we run the same speed all day no matter what we do to the car, so I don't know if it's uh, something where I've got a mental block where I can't go any faster than what I'm going, but uh, you know, we're not where we need to be today. He was 34th fastest in practice, Alan. You know, Kenny Wallace told me if they could find a way to feed his qualifying lap some stack or two and slim it down quick. Yeah, reduce that speed some. Yes, that's yes. right. He said he hadn't figured out a way to do that yet, so he's got to step on the gas. Well, that's right. He ran a 29.60. He needs to narrow that down, slim it down to about a 26.20, yeah. and he's got a chance. Kenny Wallace, best qualifying effort in New Hampshire, fourth this race, 1998. He's a Bush Series winner here, 1991. Check TNT pace chase. Three quarters, 85, almost nine tenths of a second. Yeah. Off post. Here, all over the, uh, the red uh -huh. Get Down there, trying to drive that thing off into the corner. I'd attempt to make the sound effect for you, but it wouldn't yeah, sound wouldn't. very good. <laughs> it would be rather unflattering on television. <laughs> Kenny Wallace. Looking to see if he can stay out of provisional land at this point. Hmm. That lap of five hundred of a second slower, but he is fifth of the five cars that have gone. So, Stacker 2 Dodge, you know what? As consistent as those two laps were, if he could run that every day, all day Sunday, he'd be all right. He'd be in great shape. Five of 47 drivers have made their butt pole qualifying runs at New Hampshire. Dale Jr., fastest. Here's the Wendy's race menu. What's coming up as we follow the race for the championship Sunday, 1230 Eastern time. Our coverage of the 300 miler from here in New Hampshire, starting with Discover Card Countdown to Green. That is what
what's upcoming this weekend here on TNT. And Dale Jarrett, just like all the other cars, he gets down in turn one and just can't keep the car down where you would think he needs to, although this is a pretty decent lap. He's just a tenth of a second slower than Junior. Nice two tenths. Mm, almost. It's going to be fourth out of the six drivers that have gone so far for Dale Jarrett, 29-19. Just a shade slower than he ran in practice. He ran a 29 flat. Of course, the difficulty of this team to focus in on their jobs here this weekend and try and find the speed they need, it's got to be enormous. Oh, I don't know how they're even here going around the racetrack as well as they are. Lap two in the books for Dale Jarrett. Former winner here in New Hampshire, July race of 2001. Jarrett is in, in the middle of the field in fourth out of six position. DJ's got a pretty incredible record here in New Hampshire. Seven straight top ten finishes, including this victory. When he clanged and banged with his Robert Yates racing teammate and came out on top. And by the way, John Bryan, the Jack man that was injured at Indy, is back this weekend on that Jack again. How about that? Marty? Well, BP, let's see how good your eyes are. BP says the track looks a little slick there, Herman, is it? Ah, the old Stacker 2 Dodge wasn't, isn't in the racetrack. We've been struggling since we've got here. It's a shame because this is one of my best racetracks, you know. A couple bush wins and, and you know, we're just a little disappointed right now. we got our homework to do and hopefully we'll be better tomorrow during practice. But, yeah, BP, I was up. I felt slippery. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun when it's slick out there. I uh, know, but you got to still stay on the wheel. There you go, BP. If you were out here, you'd stay on the wheel, too, Matt. Kurt Busch, eighth in points, but only 66 markers out of fifth. Kurt, a truck win here and a second in the cup race. you got to feel like this is a race where you guys can make a push. Yeah, I really enjoy coming to Loud, New Hampshire. It's just a cool racetrack with the sealant, and especially when they fix the track as far as the low groove and the high groove. It's a fun place to race. So the road made forward. It's doing pretty good. It's just tough to pick up a lot of time here in qualifying. Normally, if you run the same speed you in practice, you've done pretty good. So we'll shoot for that. He was 20. 24th fastest track for the first first pole here. Johnny Benson on the clock now. Benson qualified second for this race a year ago. Finished fourth. Picked up a top 10 finish at Richmond last weekend. He was 16th best in practice, but none of these guys can duplicate their practice speeds. He ran 20.96, and we can see here this is going to be about a third of a second, maybe a half second slower than he had practiced. About four tenths. Just kind of had to chase it up the racetrack. Just second fastest. Not bad. 29-14. He was only two tenths actually slower than he had run in practice. But he's also two tenths slower than Dale Jr. So he's second fastest, but Jr.'s got the field by a bunch right now. Yeah. Well, Ryan Newman, who will qualify later in the show, had the field by a bunch in practice today. We'll see if he can duplicate. Second lap for Benson he is a little bit slower, so he'll be in second fastest for the moment at 29.140 on the outside of row one. Yeah, I tried to get after on the second lap, but I spun out down to one and two. <laughs> the uh, slimy, like always. Post yeah, I was really qualifying good diagnosis there. Well, see, you can hear that if you get NASCAR. In demand. Very good, BP. In-car cameras, virtual dashboards, real-time in-car data, and... Audio! Live team audio. There you go. Listen to Benson and James Ince talk about this thing. One triple eight sports in. Marty? On the radio with Dale Jarrett, if you had heard that, he probably would have said the lap was just uh, okay. Uh, but in the goal of trying to equal what you did in practice, you did pretty good on that, DJ. Yeah, I uh, fell off a little bit, but uh, we, we'd been tied all day, and we just tried to free it up a little bit uh, through the center of the corner. We accomplished that part of it. Uh, uh, but it was a little too much. The tracks lost quite a bit of grip uh, as the afternoon's gotten a little bit hotter and uh, the trucks ran. So uh, we just went a little bit overboard there. It has been a very trying week for your race team, Dale. Yeah, it sure has. Uh, certainly we're here today and the guys have worked extremely hard. It's that dedication and uh, the leadership from Sean that has them here today doing that. But our thoughts are, are all day and for quite a while will be with Sean Parker and, and his family. Uh, uh, with the loss of his wife, Tara. Uh, just a tragic accident, and uh, 
you know, we're all here for, for him and support him, and we hope that everybody out there uh, will remember Sean and his family and Tara's family in their prayers uh, tonight. Kind of makes this racing stuff seem trivial, guys. Yep. Here comes his teammate, Elliot Sadler, off the corner. Heard Elliot talk about the determination to perform well this weekend on the part of the Robert H. Racing team. And so far, so good. Third best for Elliot. Elliot was 12th fastest in practice. 29-163 was his lap, uh, the first of the two, and he had that big wiggle down on one and two, so this one's got to be slower. We'll see. Now this, we are comparing this lap to the lap of Dale Earnhardt Jr., and we can see he's going to be a half second almost slower than Jr. Elliot's best ever qualifying here in New Hampshire is his seventh place. He's got a shot at that. He is, he is third fastest right now. Lots of cars to go. Oh, yes. So, eight of 47 drivers have made their butt pole runs. Robbie Gordon still to come. Back at New Hampshire, Larry Foyt just finishing his butt pole qualifying run. Ninth out of nine so far. That might be tough to get in the race. Yeah, that 29.84 is just not going to be fast enough to be in the top 35, 36 cars here this afternoon. And Larry's team, one of the farthest down in owner points. We'll see as the qualifying session goes on. How'd you like to win a trip to New York City? You can work as a special correspondent at this December's Winston Cup award ceremony. Tune in to TNT's coverage of Winston Cup racing from New Hampshire Sunday. And pay very close attention to which drivers leading at lap 50. You'll need to know that to enter the NASCAR Big Apple sweepstakes. We're not eligible, I don't guess. We're going to be there anyway. I want to go to London. We want people to come help us. Oh, okay. Well, good. Bernie Sadler on track now. Colors of the Virginia Cavaliers, his home state. 38th best in practice, so Hermie needs to run about 29.30. About 29.30, he'll be in, I believe. Hermie looking to make his sixth start of the season. He's been in one previous Winston Cup race here in New Hampshire, along with seven NASCAR Bush Series races. No. Ran 29.75. You said 30, right? And the 29.30 is what I think he needs to run. Yeah. At one time, he may even still be, but Herbie Sadler was the youngest Chevrolet dealer in the United States. Sadler Auto Centers, and he was what, 24, 25 when he, he uh, took possession of it? The amazing thing, when my youngest son, Keith, went off to college, guess who they put him in a room with? Hermie Sadler. Sadler. First time I ever met him was a freshman in college. Two guys had nothing in common, did they? Second lap a little bit better, 29.53. I still wonder if that's going to be fast enough to make the top 36. Maybe. Let's hope. Marty? BP, Johnny Benson's lap looks slick. Was it slick? <laughs> oh, it's definitely pretty slick. It's about a tenth and a half slower than what we practiced. So we'll, we'll see where it ends up. I mean, my guess would be about about... 16th, 18th, we were 16th on the sheet, went a little slower. A lot of cars can get between me and the eight right there. It's a pretty big difference. So um, we'll see what the Babylon Pine is going to end up. I think it'll be good for the race, though. So. This race last year was pretty good. Johnny led 53 laps and finished fourth. Matty? And Robbie Gordon has a win here. Would love to add a pole to his racing resume, but how much do you have to pick up realistically, Robbie, to pull that off? Um, less than a tenth from where we ran in practice to where Junior's at, but one thing we have watched, all the cars in front of us are slowing down about a tenth and a half from what they ran in practice. Uh, we put a, some, uh, some get-up juice inside this car, and I think the singular wireless Chevrolet has a shot at the pole for sure. Well, he's never finished inside the top 15 here. Would love to add a top 10 start to his New Hampshire racing resume. Now, he was talking about get-up juice. Uh -huh. He was really talking about a little bit of timing, a little bit of maybe taking some fuel out. I mean, no juice per se, you you're, understand? You're, you're trying to establish for them that they're not cheating. Exactly. They're just doing the normal things to get some speed for Carl Bayer. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Let's see if Tony Stewart's got some get-up juice in his car, and he's going to need it. 34th in practice for Big Orange. And a real-time comparison of his lap to Dale Jr.'s currently fastest lap. Says there's not enough get-up juice. No. Right now, he's about a quarter of a second slower than Jr., and the bubble keeps going the wrong way. Oh, no! It's, oh, it's flying over to the right side. No, slow down, ball. Check this out. The numbers are... 
second lap so far. Hermes Everybody Sadler. Else. Hermes it's Sadler the, did. It's been the first lap. Right now, Tony's looking a little bit better. About a third of a second. Three, oh. three cars have picked up on the second lap. It's going the other way. Stop, ball. Tony Stewart is going to remain right where he was. Seventh fastest out of 11. 29-341. His first lap was the quickest of them. Tony Stewart, winner here in New Hampshire. July of 2000 and finished third in this race one year ago. There's BP's favorite word, free. Yes, free. Log on to NASCAR.com and check out Track Pass. You can follow this weekend's racing action live online. If like to find out more about it, check out NASCAR.com. Folks, free 14-day trial. <laughs> Man. There's only one other word BP likes better than free. Food. <laughs> you knew I, I knew where you were going. I was going to say buffet, but this, it's okay. Uh, well, here's a guy that really had a terrific run last Saturday night in Richmond, and the engine gave up with about, what, 100 laps to go? Yeah. 50 laps to go? Oh, hated to see that because they had such a terrific run going. Yep. And Jimmy Spencer on the pole for tomorrow's NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race here. He won that pole position in the Ultra Team's number two truck. truck that Jason Leffler had been driving this year. Right. So Spencer doing double duty here this weekend, and we'll see if that added experience and added lap times are going to help him. Who is he in practice? 25th in the uh, of practice. So the track. If he could duplicate that, he would be second. He ran 29-04. What got the engine last Saturday night? Yeah. RPMs. Yeah, he had to pedal it there. Yeah. You hear him? Had to work the gas pedal coming off of four. Wow. Ninth. He ran 05. He's a half second slower in practice. I mean, now in qualifying than he was in practice. Jimmy looking to make his 430th NASCAR Winston Cup start on Sunday. See that left front wheel, just watch him work that tire, trying to get it down into the corner there. Like the last time that he pushed up and had to get off the throttle, as you said, had to pedal off turn four because of the push. There's a faster one on lap two by about a tenth of a second. Still not fast enough. Eighth for Jimmy out of 12. 29, 4, 5, 7. Ken Schrader, Kurt Busch, when we come back. Pole qualifying continuing here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Dale Earnhardt Jr. still the fastest. Now, earlier I was taking a look at the five cars checklist for this weekend, so I thought, you know, we ought to have a TNT checklist to make sure we get everything done before the race starts. So, guys, I've just sort of begun one here, and uh, you can tell me what you think here. We can, of course, we got to turn the power on. you got to point that satellite dish. Now, the booth catering, you got to cater the booth, Benny, and it's free, okay? Uh, you got to have some hairspray and makeup, I think. Yeah, you need to well, make sure... Yeah, well, do. You need to make sure that race car spelled backwards is, is his race, race car. car. That's good. That's um, good, Dave. And then our producer, Sam Flood, he likes to drink orange juice during the show, so you have to make sure you get OJ for Sam, okay? Uh -huh. So make sure he has some orange juice for the show. And then clean out Wally's car. Doggone it, last week I discovered there's all kinds of junk in that thing, and before any TNT show should start, you definitely need to clean out Wally's car. So I left some room down there, guys. Give me some suggestions. We'll complete I our checklist. i got a New England suggestion for you, Dave. Go ahead, Alan. you got to have some chowder. Uh, Eat some chowder. Chowder. Yeah, let me work on that let right now. Let you work on how to spell that. Uh, no R on the end, I think. <laughs> and Schrader, no provisional. Guess what? Outside pole so far. 29-13 the first lap. And even faster on the second lap, but not quick enough to get uh, past Dale Earnhardt Jr. Ken Schrader with two bud poles here at New Hampshire. Now there's a guy that ran the same speed he practiced. So have we seen the track conditions turn? Enough running on it now that that slipperiness from sitting in the sun has gone away. It could be Tara. I scared myself so bad on the get-go lap. That's what I'm talking about. He scared himself. Tara, that's what. But he had to go. He knew he had to get that good run to get in. Yeah. <laughs> scared myself so bad. That's great. <laughs> Absolute Tara. So Kenny Schrader is in. 
be in second spot and he will be toward the front of the field for Sunday's 300 miler here. Great job by uh, Kenny and that team. So that's 13 of 47 drivers and we understand that someone has left a wrench on the track. Dave, add to your checklist. Remove all tools from the car before you send it out to qualify. We'll be back. From the network that knows drama. A little trick I learned in the car seat for turn at home. Did you hold this? Nicholas Cage, Angelina Jolie. Gone in 60 seconds. Tonight at 8 on TNT. Oh, did you see that neat old Mustang? Oh, I, I did. Hope, I hope nothing bad happens to that in that movie. Oh, it's going to. Trust me. Uh, something bad's going to happen to him. Something bad happened to Morgan Shepard. He's 14th of the 14 cars that were qualified. And Morgan struggling to get up to speed here today. Here's Kurt Busch. Kurt going to add to his authentic New England weekend experience by staying in town an extra day and going to Fenway. Is he? See the Bo Sox play. He was 24th best in practice. Let's see. He ran... 29 04. Let's check it out. See. Go inside our TNT pace chase and see. We don't have a very good start, do we? No. He's a quarter of a second off and he's only been through turns one or two. How about this stat on Kurt Busch BP? He's got eight top five finishes this season. Four wins and four second place finishes. Yeah. I noticed I was looking the other day and I noticed he'd run second. I think Harvick might have run second more times than Kurt Busch. But Eighth best. 29-25. Oh, almost got the wall there. That would be a classic definition of loose. And up the racetrack some. Kurt Busch finished second in this race a year ago. Started sixth. His second lap's going to be a little bit slower because he's going to slide off of turn two, but he will be on the outside of row four for now. And he didn't hit the wall, which is the good news. That's a good thing. <laughs> Marty? It is good, Alan, to see Ken Schrader up in the top five area. Second for you, Ken. I guess you should scare yourself on the get-go lap more often, shouldn't you? Well, we just it was real loose, and you know I knew everybody was slowing down, so thought I got to go out there and uh, get get a lap where we don't slide the thing. You know, if we don't go fast enough, that's one thing. If you try to go too fast and mess up, then shame on you. And he said, all I got to do now is race a little better. He's second fastest. Oh, you want one more? One more thing. Oh, okay, I'm we sorry. We really need a name on the side of this car. See, we got Budweiser, Federated, and Bam, and that's that's our main sponsor right there. And we got 1-800 call ATT sometimes, but need help. Let's put BP's head on the uh, on the hood there. BP can do it. He can register every time he calls 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. Right, but I think his head on the hood would not be a pretty sight, do you? Oh, I think BP's got a, a pretty head. I can see mine going that way. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kenny. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. That hair is way overrated. Matt? And BP, guess whose birthday it is today? Oh, Ricky Rudd. Well, Ricky happy birthday, Rudd. Ricky. 47 years. By the way, Ricky, congratulations. Happy birthday. Now, how about qualifying? You guys were 27th in practice. Well, it looks like, uh, looks like qualifying in general is slowed down. So we got to figure it out. If we just stay the same, we're going to be in pretty good shape. But, you know, we worked on this uh, on this motorcraft uh, tour a lot in practice. Never did quite get it dialed in. The last couple laps of practice, though, the car was sticking pretty good. We run our best laps. So uh, hopefully, you know, a good shot at a, a good top 10 would be nice. The 94 New Hampshire winner finished third with this race car last week after some minor repairs to the hood, didn't the fender, and, and the cowl there, you Benny. All right. Looks like a pretty decent lap for Robbie Gordon. Yeah. Hey, right in the middle of the field, 29-20. Robbie Gordon, last four New Hampshire races, a win, a seventh, a 17th, and a fifth. He's doing pretty good here. Yes, he does very well. And this lap so far going in turn three, uh, just a tenth of a second. But that wheel is spinning. Keeps on to fast, going the wrong way. And lap number two for Robbie Gordon, actually a little bit faster. Got him up to second. Yeah. Wow. 29 flat, 29.051 for Robbie Gordon. And who will ever forget Thanksgiving weekend, 2001, the season finale postponed to that week because of the September 11th tragedies. Robbie Gordon moving.
the other Gordon out of the way to score a big NASCAR Winston Cup win, his first. And in Victor Lane, he and Richard Childers donate all the money to the 9-11, the, the New York, the New York funds, yeah. Different funds. So Robbie Gordon qualified second right now. He started 15th here in the July race and finished fifth. It's pretty good. Waiting for the next car to run, so let's take a break. Back at New Hampshire International Speedway, but won't qualify on TNT. The 17th of 47 cards is on the track, Casey Mears, and he had all kinds of trouble there getting around turn one. Boy, he did. And Casey had run a 29.96. Would it be good enough for second best if we could duplicate? But boy, these guys are really slipping and sliding. And just like he is slipping and sliding, trying to get a lap in during qualifying here in New Hampshire. That's a pretty good lap for having the trouble he did in turn one. That's third for Casey Mears. 29.10. Maybe the racetrack. I started to say he was getting some grip, but boy, he looked like he was struggling in that corner. Casey started 35th and his 16th in his only Winston Cup race here, which came back in July. Best qualifying of this season, fourth at Chicagoland Speedway, mid-July. See if that two's... Oh, did there's he, some wall. Did he get it? I think he touched it. I think he touched it. A little bit slower on lap two, not much, but third fastest for Casey Mears. Just behind Dale Jr. and Robbie Gordon. So all of a sudden, two of the last uh, cars here to go have put themselves up front. Maybe the track is uh, getting a little grippier, as Wally would say. What do you think, Marty? Is pit road any grippier? Uh, pit road, uh, I don't know, pit road grippier. It looked awfully slick on Robbie Gordon's lap, but how'd you pick up on your second lap, Robbie? Um, we kind of talked about it before, and um, we did the same thing here last time. And, um, you know, if you overdrive that first lap, you don't have much tires left. So what we tried to do is um, save the car as much as possible for the first lap and improve on our second lap, which we did. Um, thought it would be a little better than that, though. What was it, an 05 or something? So, um, you know, I, I thought we'd run a, an 80 or a 90. So a little disappointed by that, but this will be a good starting position for sure. Real quick, countdown to green, 1230 on Sunday. What are we going to see? Me and you acting crazy? You acting crazy. You were actually kind of nutty out there, you know that? <laughs> you are a wild man. So you get to see Robbie Gordon act silly. Sunday, 1230, countdown to green. Matt? Four wins here in New Hampshire. And Jeff Burton, I know you'd love to add another one, and it starts with qualifying. How about your race car? Well, we were nice fastest in practice. Uh, we unloaded it. We weren't, we weren't all that great, and we just kept making it better and better and better. Um, you know, the track obviously has lost some speed. Seems like the last few cars may have, may have gotten a little bit better. Um, this is a tough place to qualify on because the track changes a great deal between practice and qualifying. So hopefully if it'll, if it'll just drive as good as it did in practice, I'll be happy with that. This team continues to back it up week in and week out. They are so due for a victory, Alan. Yeah, sure are. And I uh, talked with Jeff some this morning. Both you and I did that. They're, they're working hard at it. Here's Todd Bodine, National Guard Ford. Well, he was 31st best in practice, but right now he's 11th best out of the 18 cars of the qualified. 29-32 was his first lap. Todd's best qualifying here in New Hampshire is sixth. He's kind of struggled here. He's qualified and started in the 30s the last uh, four times he's raced here. He had a pretty decent run going until he got to turn three, and you can see just how much these cars slide through these corners. Cars that have a decent lap going in turn three, when they get to the corner, they just start slowing down dramatically. Second lap is a little bit faster for Bodine. Leave him though in the 11th spot out of 18. But Todd's solidly in the field for uh, Sunday's race. Marty, what do you got? Well, Casey had us a lap that looks that out of control. Actually, become the third fastest lap of the day. I don't know. It felt out of control. You know, I mean, right now, it's just a good lap for the target dodge. And, and for me and for the whole team, I mean, we're struggling a little bit this year, and we just keep chipping away. We keep getting better, you know, but we just don't get the results. And that's really what we're going to focus on this weekend. And uh, it was wild. It was definitely loose. We lost a lot of grip from uh, from practice to qualifying. But, you know, we just touched the wall off at the, on that last lap there. But I think if I wouldn't have had to pedal it, I had to pedal it off there a little bit, we would have been a little better. But, um, if it looked out of control, it kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll describe the uh, touching of the wall as a scrape. He did do a little bit of right rear damage, but nothing uh, that should be too terribly bad. No, that did look like that he had hit hard enough. There we see the contact with the wall. 
Yeah, I just took a little paint off it. Just a light kiss. You think Casey was a little out of control? Did he sound like he was trying to catch up to his adrenaline there as he was doing that interview with Marty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Here's John Andretti. In the DEI 1 car. Plenty of best in practice, but there again, you know, it doesn't really matter what you did in practice. You have to try to duplicate, and no one has been able to do it. Junior has been about as good as anybody. I guess Kenny Schrader did duplicate his practice run and his qualifying run. John Andretti with five top ten qualifying efforts in New Hampshire in 16 career races. Best of them the second for the Petties, July 2000. And you can see just how much he loses on that first lap. It'll be 12. Here at 29-31 on this qualifying run, he had practiced at 28-98. A third of a second. Fast character. I want you to roll. <laughs> Come on, John. Don't scare us like that. And there again, got a decent lap going in the corner. But watch when he gets in there and the car starts sliding across. How that ball just keeps going the other direction. This will be pretty decent. I think this will be faster. How about second? I thought it was going to be faster. You're right. 29 flat. 29-0, 4-5 for John Andretti on his second lap. And it puts him into the number two spot behind his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The engine pushing a little water there, a little overheating going on before he... <laughs> yeah, we see. Back around. Looked like old faithful every once in a while, just a geyser comes out. Right up by the right front corner of the windshield where the overflow is routed on that car. Ricky Craven will get a big roar when he goes out to qualify in a little bit. Matty? Sir, the hometown favorites here comes to New Hampshire. Holes here, Ricky. You've got a lot of work to do. get up in the top ten. Matt, yeah, really. Matt, the last. Matt, you fix your that. batteries. Fix your microphone there, Matt, my boy. We'll get that fixed up in a minute. I hate it when that happens. I do too. Bit crew to Matt. <laughs> Here's the birthday boy, Ricky Rudd. Forty-seven years old. There, he ran twenty-nine. Oh, like I said, it doesn't matter what you ran in practice. You got to try to duplicate. 29.07 was his best speed. Now it's 47. 47. He just a puppy. Ricky, winner of the second ever Winston Cup race here at this track, July 1994. Driving uh, his own car that day, led uh, 55 laps, started third. What would you say he was in practice? 27th. Uh, 27th, yeah. I tell you what, this is uh, so far so good. Be a decent lap, but whoops. Oh, that ball when he gets up three and four. Boy, does it take off. Yeah. He lost three, four tenths of a second up in that corner. 14th on lap one for Rudd. 29376. This is the same car that was um, danced upon. Is that a polite way to say it? Yeah, I think it's good. Stomped upon? Stomped upon is a better word. Yeah, yes. post race pit road scuffle after the Richmond race last weekend. Because there was no gaiety in that. Yeah. Yeah, it was stomped, not dancing. All fixed up and ready to go. And Rudd with a good, solid finish last Saturday night. Looking to do more here this weekend. Lap two is a little bit faster. And it moves him up to 13th spot in 29 3 2 9 for Ricky Rudd. Speaking of Saturday night, they say Saturday night's all right for fighting. This was in the closing laps. Rudd and Kevin Harvick racing for second. Contact between the two. Harvick goes around into the wall. Then at the conclusion of the race, bump, runs into Rudd's car on pit road. The crewmen try to intervene, but on the way off the car, they um, abuse the Wood Brothers car a little bit, and that sets it all off. Watch the crew member when he comes down the front of the car. That's Mike Sears. Wrong move. Wrong move. That got him penalized this week. He's home watching this on TV. Let's see. Kevin Harvick fined 35 grand. He's on probation till the end of the year. Crew chief Todd Barrier fined 10 grand. The two crew members fined and suspended this week. Uh, two more crew members fined. All four on probation to the end of the year. Plus Ricky Rudd's crew chief Pat Tryson fined $5,000 for language. All in all, it was interesting. He told that guy to get off his car, but they didn't like the way he told him to get off his car. Oh, Mikey! Mikey. Boy, they're slipping and sliding here at the... And so that's ruined his whole first lap, because that was the momentum that gets him to the green flag for the, for the go. All right, let's see if he can keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, 
Yeah, so far so good. Mikey Walter qualified fifth here back in July. He was 14th in practice earlier today. Hey, I got a pretty good lap going. This is not bad because you're right, he lost some momentum coming down the corner. But can he, will that ball stop up in the corner? Stop ball. It might be a break. It did. Came back the other way. How yeah, this that? is not bad. Nice job. Second fastest for Michael Waltrip. So now the Dale Earnhardt Incorporated cars are one, two, three. Junior Michael and John Andretti. And Michael's got a better lap going this time. Yep. Better lap. Hey, 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 might have something going here. He knocked a bunch of time off turn four last time. Let's see if he can send no. that thing spinning backwards again. Yes. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's going to be close. Very close. No. Oh, he got him. He got him. He went 8.75 to 8.8. Michael Waltrip squeezing ahead of his teammate, Dale Jr., by 8 one thousandths of a second. Of a second. So a DEI 1-2-3 right now in qualifying. Let's hear from the third guy in line. Marty? John Andretti would be third in that equation, Alan, and you picked up on that second lap, impressive second lap, but uh, was it under control? Yeah, I was under control. I just kept messing up. I don't know what I... I kept, I just couldn't quite get the car to stick, but the Penzoil Chevy was really good. They, they added more horsepower into the hood, and um, it was great. It's good to see Michael take the pole and Junior second on third, and they need to stop qualifying right now. <laughs> and um, But... Um, just looking for a good Sunday. You need your teammate not to hit you. That wasn't very nice. He was just trying to scare you. John Andretti currently third. And smiling. And he should be. Jeff Burton's turn now. All right, now he was ninth best. We talked to him. He gets around this race track very well. How many times has he won here? Three or four times, hasn't he? Uh, four, yes. Okay, all right, let's see. Can Burton do it? Any challenge those DEI Chevys? Green flag, he's off. Jeff Burton's wins here coming in the July 97 race, July 98, July 99, and the September 2000. We haven't seen this much. Green, green, green. How about that? All right, but here's the place. Turn three, turn four. We normally see that ball go the wrong way. <laughs> Once again. This is not bad. It's going to be close. It is going to be close, maybe. Oh, third best. 29-0-3-9 for Jeff Burton. With another lap to go. And this is close. This is very, very close. Uh-oh. Turn three. Hang in there, car. That held pretty well. Oh. Man, look at it coming, how this thing just starts to spin in the middle of the corner. And well, let's see here, the final sprint down to the stripe, and it's going to be a little bit slower on lap two. Third fastest for Jeff Burton, he breaks up the DEI stranglehold on the top three spots, Marty. Mikey was a little worried that he wasn't going to be on the pole any longer. He said, hurry up, hurry up, I may not be on the pole. For out of, as out of control as that uh, get-go lap looked, that was impressive, Mikey. Well, the car came in. Uh, I was a little too aggressive coming up to speed, and that was my fault. And then on the second lap, uh, slid out in four off the exit a little bit. Had a good lap going until then, but um, we're proud because that'll get us up toward the front. We ran real good here last time in our Napa, Oreo, Coca-Cola, Klausner Furniture, Chevy, and um, looking forward to the race on Sunday. Thanks for letting me get in that plug. No problem. You guys have really resurrected this flat track program. What's been the key, Mikey? We're just better everywhere. Our team just does a great job on setting the cars up, taking my input, and uh, using what I say with all their knowledge and making the, the, a better mousetrap. Our cars are just better, and uh, I'm real pleased with the communication I have with Slugger and the, the chemistry and the leadership he possesses with this team. He just really directs this ship. Proud of him. Daryl's daughter, my niece, Sarah Jessica, was uh, or Sarah Caitlin was in Tennessee, and I told her that if I got on TV, I would say hello. And uh, I'll beep you on next tail here in a minute. There you go, his best New Hampshire start before this fifth if he holds on to the pole. Matt, Marty, the Dodge was in for another great week. Mayfield second last week, Ray at Richmond. Bill's getting ready to qualify. Jeremy, how about your program for this weekend? I understand also the happy positive glasses have already come out. Yeah, the only thing that scares me, you know, is they're kind of a 70s style Elvis glasses. and. And kind of gold? Bill, yeah, but and Bill won't take them off, so you know, he likes them. But, uh, yeah, great job on the guys last week. You know, Bill would have had a good run there, too. Got involved in a little wreck. Uh, had two top tens at Darlington. So, uh, I feel uh, here we might not qualify as good as we want to. But Richmond, we were...
were about mid-pack, but we were strong in the race, and that's what we'll be looking for Sunday. So who had the happy, positive glasses on today? Well, they've been passed around from Jim Pullman and uh, some of the guys, but if you, uh, if you get a negative attitude, they make you wear the Elvis glasses. <laughs> A negative have you, attitude. Have you got happy, positive glasses? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm always happy and positive. Here's Mark Martin, 17th on lap one. Lap two is going to be faster, but not move him up any in the rank. 17th for Mark out of 23. Two-time former New Hampshire Bud Pole sitter is going to have to come from in traffic. Dave, what are you discovering right now? Well, Alan, I've got some good news for you. You can finally build your 2004 Winston Cup car. You know, you say you don't need it till February, but these teams will start building cars immediately now that NASCAR has told them what all the dimensions have to be on the car. That announced what was made on Tuesday. And so Tuesday afternoon, the guy's phone that was ringing off the hook is the guy that makes all the templates that are used to measure these cars. Now, the guys will measure them, you know, using lasers and measuring them in the shop, but they want to know that when they get to the track, the templates that the NASCAR officials use fit their car just like they did at the shop. So there's 32 of those templates that they'll use to go through technical inspection and another seven gauges that they'll use. So you've got to get that whole set. You call up Steve Richardson from Richardson Racing Products, and he is very busy right now. Now, BP, I got a little quiz for you. All right, David. I saw one here that I had never seen before. This is a template that's going to be used probably next year. Do you know what it's for? Uh, no. That would be the one that you put the ribs on and you turn it over the top of the barbecue. And a rotisserie. Yeah. I thought it was very an nice. I thought it was an antenna. <laughs> Actually, what they're doing, and what they call this is a survey right now. NASCAR officials are showing this to the teams, and they're showing them what it's going to be so they can get ready for it. They place this on the cowl right next to the windshield to make sure that across the cowl there is a uniform slope of one degree. And that's exactly where I'm going to leave it, because if we go much further, we'll get lost in all the technicalities. But that's what this new gauge is for. I understand where the air goes in the carburetor can only be one degree of slope. It can't be downhill too much. And they want it to be uniform across the car, and that's why this gauge is as wide as the car is. I got you. Maybe we can start something. Maybe we can get them to call it the rotisserie gauge. <laughs> Get back to you. I'll put that on the list. Thank you, Dave. Here's Carl Long looking to make his first Winston Cup start in 2003. One Carl, going to pick it up. Yeah. 30th best at first, I mean, 24th best that first lap out of the 24 cars that have run. No points to fall back on, no owner points, so uh, he's got to get in the top 36 on time. And being 24th out of 24 is not going to help to get that done. Uh, a little bit faster on lap two, but still 24th in rank. Tried to qualify for the race here in July, was unsuccessful, and he's, um, he's pretty much a long shot at this point to make the field for Sunday. Marty. Alan on the radio, Jeff Burton said, if, you know, no side grip. If you had a little more, could you have gotten Michael Waltrip? Yeah, but everybody could. You know, that's, <laughs> uh, that's the hard part. We, uh, the car, the balance was the same as it was in practice. It just didn't, you know, when you when you went to get the throttle, you could get the throttle. You just couldn't get as much of the throttle. And and so that, you know, that equates to speed. And then the second lap I thought was better in one and two. And I th thought was a little better entering three, but then in the middle of three or four got tight. And then getting tight made it really made it really loose off of four. But uh, the first lap was when you needed to get what you get done. But not a bad day with a go to us. We, we made a lot of gains during practice. And um, I don't think that's going to end up, you know, third, but it's going to be at, at worst a decent starting spot. Yeah, the problem he said is that the track is getting a lot better out there. Matt? And Ryan Newman's team just pushed his car up to the grid. Jimmy Johnson's team pushing his car up to the grid due to the long lines back at the inspection area. Jimmy, how about qualifying? Fifth fastest of practice. Michael Waltrip set a pretty good line and time. Yeah, I, I don't know what he, what he ran, but, uh, you know, I don't think he was in the top five in practice and, and really got a good lap. So that's good for those guys. Uh, Junior sort of marked it, and we went a little faster than that in practice, but some guys slowed down. He obviously, uh, Michael picked up, so I, I don't know what to expect. Um, I do know we got a good race car, and come Sunday, we're going to be another factor in this race. So uh, we'll just see if we can get a good spot, uh, you know, have a good spot on pit road and have a good day with the Lowe's team. And this is the same race car he won with here back in July. Good lap going for Craven. Almost got in the wall up turn two. Alan and I both jumped. He made that exit off the corner. This is not bad. Whoa. Almost got it again there. Let's see where it ends up for Ricky. Oh, eighth best. I thought he would be, would be better than that. 29-13. Ricky, the native New Englander from Newburgh, Maine, also spent a lot of time in the Concord, New Hampshire area in his earlier racing career, which is the closest major town to the racetrack here. He is using the entire racetrack trying to get a good speed. Our 10 pace chase shows he's about a quarter of a second off, and that bubble's going the wrong way as they make that exit off turn four. Yep. 
a little bit slower on lap two. Yep. So eighth fastest out of 25. That's not bad. That'll keep him somewhere in the top 15 or 20. He was 35th best in practice. Yep. Michael Waltrip is fastest so far here in New Hampshire. NASCAR Bud Bowl qualifying on TNT is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Wendy's Late Night Pickup Window, where you can eat great even late. And Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Johnny Sauter finishing up his Bud Pole qualifying run as we come back to New Hampshire International Speedway. And this car, he needs to make it on time. Currently, he's 19th. He needs to pick it up a little bit if he can. Did he? Oh, yeah. oh yes. I said earlier I thought a 29.30 would make it. He ran 29.292. I think he's in. 16th out of 27, he is in. in. So Johnny Sauter in the race Sunday. Also, uh, during the break, Christian Fittipaldi ran. And Fittipaldi running 23rd out of 27 so far in the Petty 43. And uh, in danger of being in provisional land. Matty? And Kevin Harvick climbing into the Goodwin Chevrolet. First off, did you know whose birthday it is today? No. Who's it? Ricky Rudd. Well, happy 60th. <laughs> <laughs> Have you two had a chance to talk about last weekend yet, Kevin? Um, no. I mean, you know, usually uh, usually the veterans are the first one to uh, to say, you know, the, the Monday morning phone call is what fixes it. So I'm just assuming that it was on purpose, as he hadn't called. You expect to get a knock on the coach door, maybe? Uh, you never know who's behind the door, so you might not want to come knocking. Now, the one thing about it, this car was actually slated to run at Dover. You were going to run the car that was crashed last week. Has that put you and your team behind at all? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you know, these guys at RCR, we've got a backup plan for our backup plans, and uh, I think this GM Buter's car, uh, same car we ran at Dover, and, and we've ran it in several places this year, so I think, uh, I think it'll be just fine. And he was 11 fastest in practice, guys. Here's Ryan Newman, track <laughs> record holder here, and it's green, green, green on pace chase. Green, green, green. He ran 28.50 in practice. The track record that Newman holds is 28.802 seconds. Oh, that's history. He just broke that. That's just history. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's history. You're right. By a bunch. 28.56. He duplicated his practice run. 28.561. Wow. New track record here at New Hampshire. And he might be going faster yet on the second lap. You know, someone in the garage here this morning called him the, the space shuttle, and I can see why. Look at the speed on this number 12 mobile car. Wow. Oh, just a little bit too. One hundredth of a second slower on the second lap. So that would be uh, putting Newman in line for a potential seventh Bud Pole Award this season. Oh, man. Unbelievable. How was it? How was it? Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. How was it? Pretty good. 10-4. <laughs> okay. That would that would be the understatement of the day club so far. That was Matt Borland, the crew chief, asking the driver how it was. The driver said, pretty good. Can you just believe how well things are going for this team? No. Oh. Ryan Newman here at New Hampshire one year ago, creating some memories that he'll hang on to for the rest of his life, he along with his family. As he took his first NASCAR Winston Cup win, his dad, part of the pit crew, here to celebrate with him in a rain-shortened event. 207 of the scheduled 300 laps, but Newman led 143 of the 207 that were run. Check this out, BP. Three New Hampshire races. His worst start is 16th. His worst finish is fifth. Mm. Worst finish in three races. It's fifth. Now, here's the guy who won here back in July and who told us just a minute ago he thought he had something. Well, he might. He's got a great lap going so far, but we will stop. The TNT pace chase is over on the red now. Be green. Not red. Green. It's backing up. It's backing towards zero. Oh, just oh, man, this is close. This is going to be a good lap. Yeah, just right in the middle of three and four there. This is going to be second. How about fourth? Uh, man. I thought he was going to be about a 75. Hey, got another crack out of here. Let's see. No, no, 
not as good. No, not nearly as good. 12 top 10 qualifying efforts in 2003 for Jimmy Johnson. One by pole. He started sixth here in July, led 58 laps, won the race. His worst qualifying in three Winston Cup tries in New Hampshire is a 19th. His worst finish, 15th. He's got two top 10s and three tries here. And he'll take that first lap and sit on the outside of row number two for now. Well, new man atop the stack, Marty. And his car was, quote, pretty good. I think that's a kind of an understatement, don't you, Ryan? It unloaded good. I mean, uh, Alta Mobile One Dodge, uh, guys did an awesome job uh, back at the shop. Got to thank them. And uh, Matt and the guys just tuning into this racetrack. Um, uh, just a pleasure to drive one. They look like that. The scary part is that you brought this car because you thought it would actually race better, not necessarily be faster. Uh, I guess faster and race better is the same thing, isn't it? over a long period of time in a race. Yeah, it should be pretty good. I mean, we just uh, look forward to the entire weekend, coming back here, place of our first win. And uh, again, all the guys, Penske Racing, thank you. And this is the same car that won the pole here last year and won the race here last year. And he went fishing with you last year. Marty, remember that? That's right, BP. We're 2-0. Oh. I've been fishing with him twice. The other time was this year at Pocono. I believe he won that race, too, didn't he? Mm. Myself out to go fishing with him, so I'll win races. Well, at least you weren't on the boat Benny was on. Yeah, right. That is true, Alan. Thank you for that. That was the SS Minnow, wasn't it? Yeah. And you were, uh, it was a real rocky experience, I understand. Here's Scott Wimmer. ugly entrance to turn one there. That didn't go the way he wanted it to. One Winston Cup race this season. Qualified 28th, finished 24th at Bristol last month. Career best Winston Cup start, 19th Phoenix last November. And has very few points to fall back on, so he needs to get in the top 36 in qualifying. 23rd out of 30. That's pretty good. Yeah, even in a 49. I think he needs to pick it up a little bit, Alan. I think he needs another 10th anyway. I think he needs to get in the 30s. I may be wrong, but I think he needs to get in the 30s. That entrance that the turn one looked a lot better than it did the first lap, so maybe he can pick up a chunk here. Scott Weber, Wausau, Wisconsin, got a weekend off from the NASCAR Bush Series. They're not racing this weekend, so what's he do? Go racing. Comes to a race. Did he get in the 30s? Nope. Slow down a little bit. Well, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe that'll hang in there, but we'll see. David? Well, BP, you know, some of the hardest working guys in NASCAR are the officials, and they tech these cars as they're doing here in the tech line right now. Four times a weekend, I believe, is the correct count before they go on the track for practice on Friday before qualifying. They might go through on Saturday morning if they want to just check some things, and then they go through before the race on Sunday morning. But, you know, the officials have a dual responsibility because after they get done here, they don't just sit back for the race. They join us on pit road, and they will watch and see if lug nuts are on, if they need to assess penalties while the race is going on. So these guys are always working and sometimes they even have to work late because they have to tear down the cars and sometimes they have to keep the crowds back at the end of the race if there's a little shenanigans going on like we saw last week. So these officials work hard. They are down here the entire weekend and basically always at the, on hand for the teams to use if they need to but always also making sure the competition is a level playing field. Alan? Big yeah. Andy there. We saw him just a moment ago inspecting that car. Big Andy keeping those guys back. Can't get around him. He said, I thought I worked in racing, not <laughs> hockey. A great lineman for the Panthers are a good football team. You're in New England. You have to talk Patriots up here at BP. No, 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 no. Here if I remember correctly, no, I don't. Bill Elliott. Let's not go there. Thank okay. you. Bill Elliott on track now. Bud Pole winner here, July 2002. 55. Winston Cup pole positions to his credit. Will it be 56 today? No. Our TNT pace chase is not kind at all to Bill Elliott. Not kind at all. 14th on lap one. For the awesome one. A couple of second place qualifying runs this season is his best of 2003. What do you call it? The happy, happy lucky glasses? Or now you open could fill us in the phrase here. He knows all about that, yeah. Well, this is not a bad lab because we're, remember we're comparing this to Ryan Newman's lab. Happy positive. Happy positive. Thank you. That wasn't a bad lab. What BP. fifth best for Elliot? Happy positive. So he'll put the happy positive glasses on for the post qualifying interview in a minute. Does Jimmy Johnson have his happy positive glasses on, Marty? I think he's both happy and positive, Alan. The lap looked really good, Jimmy, but until turns three and four, what happened down there? 
Well, you go into one and two, and you think, wow, I got through here good, <laughs> but maybe I left a little on the table. Right. And you go in the next one and, and cross the line. But, you know, that, that was a good lap for us. And the car hasn't been driving real, real good in qualifying trim. It's been fast, but it's been on edge. And you know, that's the way qualifying is. But we, we know that in the race setup, we're going to have a car that can drive all over the place. And that's what we're really looking forward to. Uh, we're hoping for a top 10 today. It looks like we're going to be able to do that and uh, try to wear them out in the race again like we did last time with Lewis Monte Carlo. If you can hang there in fourth, the July winner will have his best ever New Hampshire start. Matt? Matt Kansas started out on the pole here in July by virtue of weather, starting with Carlos points. Third quick in practice. This team has really stepped up as far as practice goes and qualifying this year, Matty. Yeah, we've been getting better. I mean, I don't always do the best job qualifying, but our cars have been much faster in qualifying trim, you know, during practice on Fridays than what they have been in the last couple of years. So that's encouraging. Uh, we got a good car. Uh, you're saying before we only had one career pole. With Ryan Newman around, I might always only have one career pole. So he's uh, puts up a heck of a lap every week. He's a, he's a great qualifier. So uh, I don't think we have a shot at a pole today, but hopefully we can, uh, you know, repeat what we did in practice and uh, get up there and start at least in the top ten. But you never know. Uh, you never know, but that's a, that's a stretch. It's pretty loud. Check this out, guys. Green, green, green for McMurray off turn four. Oh, no. Come on, ball. Did you see that dirty dog? Jamie McMurray was fourth fastest in practice earlier today. He is fourth after his first lap. That's pretty good. Terrific. Uh, qualified 22nd here in July in his only previous Winston Cup uh, effort in New Hampshire. And just killed the wall during the race here in July. Yeah, down there in turn one. Oh, yeah. Back Check this out. Look, look, hey, we got a good run going here. Oh, man, once again, off turn four, that ball goes the wrong way. Yeah, that's a pretty good lap. Yeah, second fast. 28, 8 2, 6 for Jamie McMurray. Outside of row one for the rookie. Marty? We've heard a lot of drivers talk about leaving a little bit on the racetrack. Did you leave anything out there, Bill? I didn't leave nothing. <laughs> mm. uh, you know... Our Dodge dealer, UAW Dodge, it's good. I mean, uh, you come out, you make your run, you do the best you can, and I mean, then like anybody's going to touch Ryan Newman, but I mean, we'll see what everybody else has got, but we'll see what happens Sunday. The funny part was BP said, you know, the only thing I left out there, I about left the whole car on the turn two <laughs> wall. That's about all I left out there. Yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> that's bad, isn't it? Because Jamie McMurray, I talked about, that's what he did here the last time, going down in turn one. Ah, here's Jeff Gardon. Oh, yeah, I talked about McMurray. Watch this. And I talked to the crew this morning, Donnie Wingo, and he said this car was wiped out. They didn't even try to fix this car because this impact was just too much. Watch this. Ouch. Deck bed goes, the rear bumper cover goes flying over. They got said, hey, I'm on TV. Fortunately, able to talk and laugh about it afterwards. And now here at New Hampshire, the safer barrier in place as it continues to get rolled out on a track-by-track -track basis. It's here this weekend. And a blow like that, which Jimmy suffered in July, might be a little bit softer come this weekend. That is so fantastic to see all these racetracks stepping up the plate and installing these safer barriers and walls that will absorb some of the energy when these cars back into them or hit them head on, whichever. All right, Jeff Gordon. 13th fastest in practice earlier. Not bad. Yeah, that's not a bad looking not lap. Not bad looking lap at all. This is going to be in the top five, isn't it? Yep. Fifth. Good. Your prognostication skills are on very oh, sharp today. Right on, 28.90, but boy, that ball's going the wrong way. Jeff Gordon with uh, three poles here in New Hampshire and uh, three wins. Remember this... Uh, Dominated this uh, fall race the first couple of years it ran. Won it in 97, won it in 98, finished fifth in 99, finished uh, sixth in 2000, and things kind of went the other way. 29th. You know, he ran good here in July, and then about middle ways of the race, uh, you know, for whatever reason, started really struggling trying to find some speed. Oh, remember they got back in traffic, so there's a yeah. pit strategy in the race, and once he got out of that clean air, it was over. Marty. 
Alan, we were talking, I talked to Jamie Murray earlier, earlier, and he said, you know, I qualify average around the 20th, so if I get anything around 10th, I'll be happy. We did a lot better than that. Second's pretty good. Yeah, um, that's about where we ran in practice, uh, and I thought the race track could slow down more than that, but a uh, pretty pretty good effort for the Haviland Dodge. We, uh, we're not good qualifiers, so I think if we qualify good, we'll probably race really good, so looking forward to it. Let's not have a duplication of July, though, and then going down in turn one there. No, I had a really good car in July, and and had just a devastating wreck. It looked it looked spectacular, but it didn't hurt at all. Um, and don't, don't want to do that again. But this is the same car I ran at Bristol, and it's been a backup car all year long. And Bristol was the first race that we raced it. And I told everybody this morning, I said it's disappointing we've had this sitting there all year long and ran third at Bristol, and now we're going to have a really good qualifying effort with it. So happy for everybody on the Haviland team. He said if we qualify well, we should race well. Matt. And Ryan Newman's teammate, Rusty Wallace, your car goes out dead last. Now, you had a big test in Milwaukee recently. Has that helped your team this weekend? I think it has. We ran pretty good in practice. We ran a 28.97, and hopefully we can pick it up qualifying. I got a good draw. And uh, But basically, that test in Milwaukee is aimed basically at race stuff. So that's all we did. We didn't do any qualifying stuff there. But So we're going to start off with that setup tomorrow and see if it works. Now, your teammate, you got a good shot at him? <laughs> He's out there never to Leverland again. He's, he, he had a good run. They did some uh, some chassis work. It really picked them up. And uh, darn, I wish I'd have known the time they did what they did to make them go so quick. Else I'd have done it too. But uh, it worked out good for them. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. Aaron Harvey coming down to the green flag, getting a little bit tail happy as he got an accelerator. Back in, flies out. Oh, look how high he is down at one and two. Kevin 11th fastest in practice earlier today. How about his comments earlier about uh, what happened last week with Ricky Rudd and, and so on? And with uh, with other drivers is, is is there kind of a protocol there among drivers when you get involved in an incident of how you handle that or is that just a personality by personality thing that's what i think just the personality yeah i don't i've never if i ever had any kind of a situation i never, never went to the guy the week afterwards and said anything yeah so harvick the first lap was 17th best and working on lap two, of course, Harvick fined 35 grand this week by a NASCAR and put on probation to the end of the year. They want this pretty good lap he has going right now so far. But once again, off turn four, that double. Firsts. Yep. A lot better than the first lap, I think. Oh, yeah. A yeah. little bit. About a tenth. Eighth best. 29-0-3-4 for Kevin Harvick. Puts him inside the top ten. 34 of 47 drivers have made their bud pole qualifying runs. at New Hampshire International Speedway with Bud Pole qualifying. New man on the outside of row one. What a terrific run for Terry Labonte. 28.685 on that second lap. As you said, outside pole. But the run, a little bit uneventful as he come down for the green flag. Watch he comes off the corner. Woo-hoo! It seems like the cars that are really, really loose on that get-go lap are fast. What do you think that is? Tires, tire pressures, that kind of thing? I think when, as the, as the cars run about one lap, then they start pushing. Mm -hmm. But that first lap just being too loose, the get-go lap makes it perfect the first or second lap. Sterling Marlin's turn here at New Hampshire. for Sterling. He was 21st in practice, so that's a little bit of an improvement for him. Started 10th here back in the uh, July race, but was involved in an accident. About two-thirds of the way through the race, wound up finishing 39th. Little right front tire on this Coors Light car hit the wall extremely hard. Pretty good lap on this second lap for Sterling, I think. Yeah, eighth best. And looks like the racetrack is starting to come to these guys. 28.973. Marty? I think the racetrack is getting better, VP. Jeff Gordon, six fast. As you said, it was loose. Is it just so frustrating not to be able to get after the gas like you want to be able to? Yeah, this is a smooth racetrack, and it's tough to get a hold of, uh, especially just in one or two laps. Usually here in the race, we'll just get faster and faster there for a while. But, uh, you know, we picked up from practice, so I don't know if the track's better. We made gains. Uh, even though I was loose, I still able to go a little bit faster. So a lot of guys early on in qualifying lost some time from practice. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but Terry's showing us all how to get down. Of course, not, not compared to Newman, but uh, for, for us Hinder Motorsports guys, he's tearing it up. We're really proud of him. Yeah, let's bring that teammate in. You know, we can go over here and, and chat with him. He's He's been showing everybody how to do it lately, hadn't he, Jeff? He's been doing a good job. Terry, 
How about that lap for you? And uh, you nearly wrecked on that on that coming to the green flag lap. Well, I was a little bit loose back there. A lot I, loose. Yeah, I should have let off a little bit, but I didn't want to. And I, I thought it was going to be okay, and then it just kind of broke loose on me. But it was a good run for us, and so that's good. This team certainly has picked up momentum, Terry. Do you just feel the change in the in the, in the belief what this team can get it done? Well, I, you know, I, I've always had confidence in them, and I knew that we could do it. And finally, we, you know, at Darlington, we put it all together, and it's just uh, that was a great win for us. And uh, these guys in this Kellogg's got milk Chevy are doing a great job. And, uh, you know, this is a different car than we had last weekend. We had a good car last weekend. And uh, this uh, this car we ran at Richmond early in the year. And uh, so we bring it up here, and it seems to be doing pretty good. In May, it's out on the pole at Richmond. Today, it's second fastest so far at New Hampshire. Steve Park out of the AOL car. And uh, this would be not the car he started the day with. No, this is the first lap on this car. He just took the green flag, so he's feeling it out. Maybe he'll be, will be a little bit faster on the second lap. But he was 37th out of 37. We'll show you why this is not the car he started the day with in just a minute after Steve finishes his qualifying run. Uh, as it was last week at Richmond, it's been kind of a struggle here today for uh, Steve Park and his team at New Hampshire. 34th, he moves up to on lap two, 29.707 seconds. So that has bumped Carl Long out of the top 36. Here's what happened earlier today. This is going into turn three. Oh, nailed it. Almost gets the thing to do the 360, but the wall made contact with that outside retaining wall. And the wall won. Yes, it did. It usually does. Oh, yes. So Steve Park and his backup car will be most likely falling back on a provisional to be in Sunday's 300-miler. Speaking of Sunday, our coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern time from here at New Hampshire International Speedway. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from New Hampshire. Discover Card Countdown to Green kicks us off. Hope that you'll be with us as we continue to follow the race for the championship on TNT. Here's a car that was passed in practice in the pole center from last week at Richmond, Mike Skinner. And this is the car for the weekend so far. Oh, yes. Uh, no backup so far. <laughs> last weekend they went through three cars crashed in practice took the backup car out won the pole then crashed in took another car out ran the entire night successfully in the race how about it for skinner 10th fastest in practice and if he can just stay at two tenths he'd be second best well third best but he's not going to stay three and four they all start sliding that bubble goes the wrong way dramatically up in three and four Skinner, top five qualifying efforts the last two times he raced here in New Hampshire. 15th on lap one. 29-108. And needing some to keep that top five streak going. He kind of lost a chunk there in the middle of one and two, huh? Yes, he did. And we can see he's two tenths. But he can stay there. But when he gets to three and four, things start sliding across the racetrack. And we see Bubba going the wrong way so dramatically off those corners. It's like right there in the middle of the corner, the fast guys like Newman and Levante and McMurray were able to get back to the gas more quickly than these other people that we see the gauge spinning on. And when he picked up a little bit on the second lap, ran about a tenth faster, and he is the 11th best. Fell up into 11th position, under 30. Talked about the tough time Mike Skinner had last weekend. What a roller coaster of emotions this sport can be. This was first uh, laps of practice on Friday. One race car written off. Let's pull out the backup. So he goes out and wins the butt pole. About 4 o'clock Friday afternoon. That's fine. A beautiful thing. Then about 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, Winston Cup final practice goes on. And halfway through the second practice, car number two is damaged beyond repair at the racetrack. They load up another car on a truck at the team shop down outside of Charlotte, send it on up to Richmond, and they ran that third car in Saturday night's race, Dave. Rolling along with Rusty's car now. It's been through inspection. The inspectors have all looked at it. Now, I would be helping push, but I don't think Jeffrey would be too excited about me putting my hands on Rusty's car. So I'm staying away from that. But you'll notice that we've got a NASCAR official, David Bennett, back here walking along with the team to make sure they don't make any changes now that it's been through technical inspection. And if they're on a super speedway, they won't even allow anybody on the back of the car to push because, of course, the spoilers are so important. So here's me not really pushing, but emphasizing the fact that once they go through tech, the inspectors stay with until they're waved off at the front of the grid. 
Jeff might also not like you touching his car because sometimes racers tend to be superstitious, Dave. Mm -hmm. What now, Alan? I'm sorry. I said, he might also not like you touching his car because racers tend to be superstitious. And if your hands aren't exactly. normally on that car, keep them off. Exactly. And I had peanuts in my pocket yeah. and all kinds of stuff and green on. And you know what? And then just, it, was, it would have been bad. Yeah. Tony Reigns on track, lap one, 36. Great job this team did at Richmond a week ago. It's a shame they had some mechanical failures. Turned out to be a, a diaphragm in the fuel pump that caused their problems. And I've, in all my years racing, I've heard that have happening once or twice. Yeah. And those, I've been around this sport for a long time. One of those 10-cent 10, 10 parts that cost you $100,000. Tony Raines, first lap, like you said, 36. So far, Larry Ford, Morgan Shepard, Carl Long, the cars that have been bumped. And Tony moves up a couple of spots in lap two, 33rd fastest, 29.624, with seven cars, seven, eight cars left to go. So he has now put Steve Park in the 30 car, AOL car, on the bubble. Ryan Newman at one point was two and a half tenths of a second clear of second place until Terry Labonte ran. That's mm -hmm. how quickly uh, Newman got around this racetrack. And a Friendly's car. Now, Friendly's is a, a New England brand that is a part-time sponsor of uh, Derek Hope's team, one of the few sponsors he has put together. And Derek and uh, the folks at Friendly's put together a nice little promotion the other day. This is Lebanon, Connecticut. 12-year-old Seneca Tedford had uh, show and tell of a maximum kind. Just before the New Hampshire race, she was uh, the one that won a coloring contest at the uh, restaurants, the sponsor's restaurants, uh, designed this car, and got show and tell with Derek and his race team and his race car up at her school in Lebanon, Connecticut. That's pretty cool, huh? It is cool. Almost as cool as a fribble. So is there one around here someplace? Go check out one of those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Friendly? Yeah. Okay. Fribble is their version. Oh, look out, Derek. That was not previous. That was almost a spin out. A fribble is their version of an ice cream shake. Oh. He, he was trying to shake it up. Yeah, there you go. Then in turn one. He's shaking it up some more. Derek uh, in his 13th race, or looking to be in his 13th race of 2003. You know, he's got the only Bush Series win of his career. First lap, just throw that one away. He's 40th best. Can he pick it up on this lap? So far, just stay right there, Bubble. He'll be okay. Stay there. No, not that way. Yeah, there goes that. Ooh, look at him fight that thing. Yes. See when he gets up to over one second. Ooh, almost <laughs> in the fence there. Well, moved up a little bit. Not fast enough to make the cut inside the top 36 so Derek back in provisional land right now and we'll see how the uh, points shake out here when the final cars have run and then there were six let's see who we got left Jeremy Mayfield Greg Biffle Matt Kenseth he was third in practice uh, Jason Leffler Kyle Petty and Rusty Wallace are those still to come Dave Let's see, Alan. I'm, I'm still working on a list here uh, when I've got a little time. We had Chowda, Chowda right down and here. Stimas. And, yeah, a, a local fella told me you need to add Stimas to that. Yep. Uh, take the wrench off the car. I got that. Shoes, TGIF. Benny, what's that mean? Oh, I'm, I'm foiling you again. I'm sorry, big one, guy. One, one. Toes go in first. Oh. Yeah. Oh. One of the teams told me that. They told me to get that one right. Uh, okay. We got Matt's batteries on there. And then uh, don't push, but follow Rusty's car to the grid. What is... What is Matt's batteries. What's that all about, Matt? That's when his microphone. Matt, quit. how are your batteries, Matty? Oh, that's right. He's... My batteries are fine now, but Dave, I think you're forgetting one thing to add to your list. Please add an extra set of car keys. Ah, yes, very good. Marty and I shall always and forever remember to have an extra set be of car Be prepared, keys. Dave. Always be prepared. Scouts rule. There's a story there somewhere that we're all yeah. waiting to be told. Very much aware of, but, you know, folks at home don't really well, know what to do. Well, we've got time, Dave. Uh... <laughs> Matt, check your batteries. I think your batteries are going out again. Okay. Uh, yes, they are, but also you locked your keys in your car somewhere. Here's Jeremy Mayfield on track. No key required to start his Dodge. Nope. Let's Let's see one how thing. fast it runs. Well, this will be... 17th best on the first lap. What a terrific run he had last week. Oh, yeah. At Richmond. Second place. To finish second, yep. Came all the way up through the, the pack. 
Very nice job. His first top five of the season it was. Third straight, though, top ten. So this team's kind of got a little positive. They've got their, what, what is it again? Their, their uh, happy positive glasses. Positive glasses on. There you go. And he was doing okay going into turn three. He was just two tenths of a second. Slower than Ryan Newman, but now he's going to be four tenths. He's going to be ninth best. Yeah, picked up a tenth of a second. Tenth of a second, which is a bunch in Winston Cup racing. Up to ninth for Jeremy Mayfield. I wonder if those happy positive glasses are rose colored. Probably. Oh, yeah. Be another way to phrase that. All it? right, Steve Park, the 30 car, is out of the top 36. Kenny Wallace is on the ball. With five cars to go, two of whom were among the top 10 in practice earlier today. That would be Kenseth and Biffle. Yep. So nice job by Jeremy Mayfield, and Greg Biffle gets the go ahead signal. See what Biffle can do. What did he run in practice, BP? You got your sheet there. I do. He ran a 28.86, which would be good enough for fourth spot if he could duplicate that speed. It was a pretty decent qualifier. And we're off. Let's see. Biffle qualified fourth here this race a year ago. 20th in the July race here. His two New Hampshire. Winston Cup qualifying efforts. So far, so good. About a little bit slower than Ryan Newman. If he could stay, hang there, he would be good enough for second. If he could hang right there at 500, so he'd be good. Oh, but look at it go the wrong way. Yeah, but it's going to be good. going to be a good lap. Third, maybe? No. Eighth. Eighth best. Let's see what he does on lap two. Greg Biffle started second at Richmond last week. Second front row start of 2003. Remember, he was on the front row of Mark and Glenn. Only first time race winner this year when he took the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. You know what? This is not too bad until he came off turn four once again. That bubble going the wrong way. It's a little faster. Up to fourth. 28.857 for Greg Biffle. Get him on the outside of row two and bump Kenny Wallace out of the top 36. This was Richmond a week ago. A little flying 360 for Greg Biffle. Nice job of driving there. I did a 360, kept on going, and we we rode through Mark with Mark Martin through this, and all that smoke, you couldn't see anything. But a one-car incident. That's, that's when you laugh at and say, hey, got away with that one. Yes. So Greg Biffle into the top five, and here is his teammate, the championship leader, Matt Kenzer. Matt was third fastest in practice. There's 75, 28, 75. Probably doesn't have a realistic chance to beat Ryan Newman, but I could jump into that second spot. You never know. We're teetering right on the edge. It started on the pole here in July because qualifying was rained out. He was the point leader at that time. He finished third in the race. Best qualifying run here in New Hampshire, sixth, July 2002. What's it going to be here? He's not going to be happy with this. That's what this is going to be. 25th on lap one. He's not going to be happy at all. Now, can he pick it up on this second lap? All right, Christian Fittipaldi, he's out of the top 36. Tony Raines on the bubble. You heard Matt earlier when we talked him down on the road. Uh, Matt had talked to him. He just said he's not a good qualifier. Doesn't feel like he is anyway. A little overheating going on here already. This is going to be a little bit better than his first lap. A little bit better. 18th. 29-119 for Matt Kenseth. Championship leader is right smack in the middle of the field. It's been a kind of an interesting couple of weeks for Kenseth. Early troubles followed by a late rally. This was Matt fairly early on in the Richmond race last Saturday night. Bounced it off the wall off turn four, getting tagged by Todd Moline. Spun around, no major damage. A couple of pit stops to fix what damage there was. Then Robbie Reiser played a little strategy to get Kenseth some track position. And at the checker flag, another good finish for the 17 team. Matty? Well, Alan.
Alan, we have actually found the Elvis Presley Signature Edition, the Happy Positive Glasses. Where did they come from, Matt? Who, who is the owner of those glasses? Well, I believe Ray Everham actually owns those, and he wears them when he does his karaoke, his Elvis renditions, uh, with his own personal karaoke machine. Yeah. And I understand that Jim Pullman has already passed these on to another crew member who had to put on the Happy Positive Glasses because he wasn't quite happy for some reason so they, they do look almost rose colored huh yeah, well, a little bit yeah i wonder if i wonder if everham wears the cape when he does the elvis karaoke oh thing. he's got the cape he's got the the big belt he's got the whole jeweled uh jumpsuit i got it and i see where matt's hanging out by the food <laughs> okay jason leffler's on his qualifying run now lap one not fast enough to make the top 36. Jason trying to make his third one oh, start here. I think he got in the fence off turn two. If he did, he missed an awfully good chance. A little stripe over there. Those black Goodyears sometimes tend to leave some visible evidence on these white retaining white walls. Exactly. Jason had scraped up the right rear corner of that car already this morning in practice. And lap two is a little bit slower. 40th out of 44, not fast enough. Leffler's back in provisional land. Let's see. Let me see. Here we go. Coming off the corner. Did he hit the wall? Oops. Survey says there's the tire mark. Here we go. There's that black mark you talked about right there. We have evidence. Dave, have you got evidence? Evidence of another great qualifying run for Greg Biffle. Second last week at Richmond. Uh, fourth today here at Loudon. Greg, was that what was that lap like? Uh, it was a pretty decent lap. You know, we backed up what we did in, uh, in practice qualifying. I'll tell you, these guys are giving me great race cars right now. And, uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun. We're short track racing. I had a lot of fun at Richmond and look forward to having a lot of fun here on uh, Sunday. Very good. Marty? Well, Dave, for a guy who, quote, doesn't qualify very well here, unquote, good run for you, Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah, thank you. We had, we had a good car, you know. We weren't, uh, it's had, you know, we weren't that good in practice, like 20 seconds or something. But uh, these guys done a great job with their dodge here, and uh, got a good qualifying spot. Hopefully, that'll hold up a little bit. And uh, should we're almost last the qualifying, so it should hold pretty good. And uh, you know, have a good starting spot on Sunday. There's no truth to the rumor you have to wear the sunglasses Ray's been talking about all day. These Elvis sunglasses, is it? I almost stick to my spies right here. They, they do a good job. But uh, Ray looks good in those Elvis glasses. You know, every time I see him with the morning, he's over there now. Don't, don't shine him. But uh, <laughs> he does a real good job with them on, and it looks cool, you know. So, I think they look kind of silly, rose-colored glasses to me. It don't look bad until he puts on his Elvis jacket with a collar. Oh, right there. you've yeah. seen that? Yeah, y'all haven't seen that? Is it a Christmas party thing or what? No, it's um, it's at night party. It's a, it's a night jacket. He wears it a lot of night. Sounds very interesting. I think B... I think... <laughs> you know, he can't wear sunglasses at night, so he wears the Elvis jacket at night. I think BP's got an Elvis jacket, perhaps. I don't Elvis think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> he does new Elvis impersonations on weekends. What's the Elvis? Elvis right on here. Let's get Elvis on here. Elvis. Elvis. We're calling for you. Kyle Petty, 35th. <laughs> you got the glasses I on. Is your attitude good? <laughs> Is your attitude better, Jeremy? I'll see you later. Elvis glasses? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to wear your Elvis glasses. I don't know they're what the deal mine. is. Right? They're actually, no, and what's, that's what scares me. Bill wants to wear them. He wears them all the time. <laughs> um, he says he we got a pair like that in the 80s. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Jeremy's new fire suit. It's going to be like a 70s Elvis thing, yeah. That would be very cool. Can we get, I bet BP could be our fashion consultant there. Absolutely. You know, he, um, we're trying to get BP to get the Elvis wig. I, oh, he yeah. Might, he might have one. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Ray. I, he may have one. He needs something, you know. <laughs> that, that shine gets bad on Alan and Wally sometimes. Is, are, we, are we having a boring... Is, there a, is this... Must, qualifying must be boring or you wouldn't be spending... No one's told me to stop. I, I, I just keep going until they tell me to stop. <laughs> it must be a boring show. You wouldn't be that spending that time. Can we, we'll, we'll heck, let's talk about Dodge and the Dodge dealers and all that stuff. Okay. Right. Your rose-colored sunglasses are much more fun, Note Ray. Note to the audio man, close Marty's mic. <laughs> <laughs> Two cars to go. Ward Burton and then Rusty Wallace. Ward was supposed to be out a couple cars earlier in the line. His team was excused from their position. But they have made it, and here they are. And Bobby Labonte is right now on the bubble. I thought it would take 21.30 to make it. I was wrong. A, a 40 is going to make it, and, and a, a 50 is going to make it. Because Hermie Sadler is going to make the show. He ran 29.53. Ward Burton, 30th. On his first 
first lap, puts Bobby Labonte into provisional land and Kyle Petty on the bubble. You know, Bobby Labonte has had three straight top five starts and four straight top ten starts here, which was the longest such streak of any driver. That will come to a close today. Yeah, throw that out the window. That's history. Ward Burton winner by July of 2002 from 31st starting spot that day. And another car that ran very well in Richmond last weekend. And, and where'd he end up? 22nd on this lap. Max's his car number. So Kyle Petty is on the bubble and one final car to run. And for Ward Burton, he'll take it back to the garage with his home state crew chief, Frankie Stoddard, and see if they can rub on it a little bit and get it up there for a trip to Victory Lane on Sunday. Well, my guess is that... Cal Petty will have to go back to provisional land as Rusty Wallace. Dave, you, you've been writing again, adding to your list. I, uh, I heard one other thing that you might want to do at the end of the show. Yes. We'll get everything else <laughs> checked off there. Close Marty's, Close Marty's mic. mic. All right. There you go. Very nice, Dave. <laughs> it's quite a list we've got there. There are a couple inside jokes on that, too, but I don't think we'll take the time to explain it here. All right, Rusty. Rusty Wallace has come from 33rd starting spot to win here in New Hampshire before. He's also started on the pole here before, so he's had success from both ends of the spectrum. He's been around long enough that he's done about all, all these racetracks. You know, it's something I was thinking that just looking at some of the stats on Rusty reminded me of. Well, we've got 10 races to go, including this weekend. A lot of guys yet not in that Budweiser shootout next February at Daytona, including this guy. No pole yet this year. Well, Ryan Newman's won all the poles. He's won seven of them. He's got 14 guys that have won poles. He's up on Ryan a little bit. And Rusty. That's not going to get his teammate. No, but, but it's it going to be a good lap. Might get him up there in the top five. It's going to be a very good lap. Oh, man, come on, Bubble. There you go. That's going the right direction. But coming off four. Coming off four once again. Let's see. Lap one, 11th for Rusty Wallace. 29 0 one, four. That's about what he practiced. He practiced at 28.97, so... Six top fives, ten top tens in 17 races here. He's led over 250 laps. And once again, on turn four, he was okay in the middle of three and four and off that corner. Just could not get the bike. A couple of pretty consistent laps, though. But Rusty stays in the 11th position. Ryan Newman is your poll winner. We'll have a look at the starting lineup for Sunday's race when we come back to New Hampshire. NASCAR Bud Pole Qualifying on TNT is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Budweiser, the best things in life are the things that are true, Budweiser. And Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. How will they line up Sunday here in New Hampshire? Well, let's show you. Ryan Newman, for the seventh time this season, will lead the field of the green flag with the veteran Terry Levante on the outside of row one. And McMurray and Biffle, two Rebessus rookie challengers in row two. And the DEI teammates in row three. Jimmy Johnson won here in July. He's in row four with his part team owner, Jeff Gordon. See Kevin Harvick, Mike Skinner in row seven. Robbie Gordon, Casey Mears back in row nine. Robbie Gordon, a former winner here. Matt Kenseth, your championship leader in row 10 with Ken Schrader, who set that very good lap early. And now the final drivers to qualify on time. Hermie Sadler getting 36 spot in provisional land. Bobby Labonte back there. And the final spot on the field to Christian Fittipaldi. That's it for Bud Pole qualifying. We'll see you Sunday at 1230 here on TNT. Thank you.